began filming the Clash of the Canyons with no intention of what this video would become. Next on the team from Portland, Illinois. and best players, the story began to unfold. There was drama, there was emotion, there was excitement. Rain poured into Fraction Run in the days leading up to the event. We could have never have imagined that the banks of that creek would bear witness to one of the most epic showdowns professional disc golf has ever seen. This is the story. Here is the history. My name is Sean Callahan. I am the owner-operator of Delwood Disc Golf and the tournament director of Clash at the Canyons. My role in all of this stuff is to make people want to come out and spectate. That, to me, was kind of my focus. I feel like we've done the disc golf tournament portion of it enough that painting lines, to me, isn't rocket science. I want to be able to put more of my focus into making sure that spectators want to come out and that there is somewhere cool and there's something, you know, there's an event to attach yourself to and where there's gonna be emotions and you're gonna to want to get involved, you know, that there's more to it than just throwing discs. My name is Sheila Callahan. I'm the co-owner of Delwood Disc Golf. I help the behind the scenes logistics for our tournaments. It was really cool to see um, the new generation of spectators coming out, uh, families uh, with their kids, uh, we even had some local people that don't even play disc golf, and when they heard that this was going on, they wanted to kind of see what was going on. So like, it really gave them the uh, lens to understand what disc golf is and what it can be. This is mostly an influx of new players over the last year that before 2020 didn't even know what disc golf was. So I think the the gallery and the spectators that formed it was so amazing but i think that it, it was it was extremely present it, it, it was it was there it was hard not to notice it but it was also hard not to feed off the energy that was provided from the from the vibrant crowd so it was it was awesome Dan Schlitter pushes to 28 under par. The best Terry can do right now is fight for a tie on the final hole. I've got some goosebumps. This is very exciting. And Dana, the Silver Series, is going to bring us a little extra action here on July 4th. I'm waiting for those fireworks, buddy. I got a feeling they're coming, T. And you better believe Dan Schlitter drops a putt in for the win. We're going to hear him. When I heard that the DGPT was coming to Delwood, I was just like, it's about time. That was the goal. It was an A tier early on, and they, I know they wanted it to be more. They wanted it to be bigger. An event series to that caliber is what we've all been waiting for. I think that the ultimate goal was always to continue to push the envelope and to continue to make things bigger and better. So I think it means the world to the community because it's like, it's the whole purpose of what we're doing. I take a lot of pride in everything that they do because being there, helping out, doing anything it takes to get the course ready for the event, like that is what it means to be a part of Team Delwood. Their eyes on the community, seeing what the community has to offer in, in the Chicagoland area, um, will only add to uh, bringing more bigger events back to the Joliet Lockport area because they show out the volunteers, the fans, the spectators, just absolutely knocked it out of the park and it's a high, high bar to set. I'm super comfortable here. You know, this place feels like home. Mm -hmm. We don't get too many opportunities to play in front of a more welcoming crowd 
a cleaner course, mm. and it, it you know it, it makes it easy just to focus on the little things in terms of applying the pieces of my game together and hopefully putting together a good round. So for sure, it makes it a lot easier to, when we got a, a place like this to play. I love a good story. I mean, I I grew up in the '80s and '90s where all of us watched all these like heartfelt, especially sports movies. You know, where there was always like this underdog. We love to root for the people who are not the favorite, you know. So when guys like Terry Roethlisberger and Ezra Aderhold, who are just, you know, having great seasons, have this prowess when they come to the property, there's competition there, and these guys are intimidating. These guys do this for a living. I just have mad respect for him being able to be Dan Schlitter as often as he is, and then also be Dan Schlitter the disc golfer who is running events and running leagues and then taking down one of the biggest tournaments that our area's ever seen. It's incredible. I'm an athlete my entire life. I come from a gigantic baseball background. I played baseball for 20 years before I decided to dabble into the sport of disc golf. I'm a big musician as well. I've played drums and guitar basically my entire life, drums being the main instrument of choice. Played in a bunch of metal bands when I was a teenager and, and dabbled around in some other genres as the years went on. That's Dan Schlitter in a nutshell, baseball, disc golf, and, uh, and some music it's sprinkled in there as well. I am still getting to know Dan, and I love that I get opportunities to get to know him, especially in like these extreme situations like winning an A-tier for the first time. I've never seen him do anything other than e exactly what I just expect out of us as people. I have a lot of respect for what he is doing. To hold down a full-time job, uh, to play so well in these tournaments, and then to turn around and also run tournaments is absolutely amazing. I'm excited for him and I think it's great that he he can do all those things. He's just like hometown hero, just like he can do it, so can you, and like that is just an undeniable reaction to things like that. And if you witnessed it, or you know him, or you're from around here, you're gonna be positively affected by that, no doubt about it. It makes me happy to hear because if I can do it, why can't anyone else? I'm a local, you know, I'm a guy who you're not going to see on the registration list for every disc golf pro tour event. I'm not going to be a name that you've heard a bunch, but yet here I am, you know, I, I came out on top and there's no reason for anyone else to not be able to do that as well. It makes me feel really good because that's kind of where I was when I first started. When I first started competing in 2016, I was seeing players like, Isaac McDonald and Gavin Rathbun, who are these Illinois amateur superstars, you know, 990 rated, pushing 1,000 rated. Illinois had no 1,000 rated players at the time when I had first started, when I joined the PDGA. They were the cream of the crop. They were, you know, rising to the top and... I'm the cream of the crop, I rise to the top. But the cream will rise to the top, oh yeah. I am the cream, the cream of the crop. I was eager to see what their games were like and getting to meet Gavin right as I started playing competitive disc golf, I quickly was, you know, showed, wow, this is, this is what a, a masher looks like. This is what a person looks like who has a complete game put together. Okay, uh, I have a lot to do. I want to see the Rocky movie. You know, I want to see the guy that, that we know that we're all homies with take it down against some of the best players that were signed up in their best form so that we can prove that we do create really good disc golfers around here and we do have a really solid community that that brings out the best in what we have to offer as far as putting out more competitors and these are guys that i've like watched play this sport for the last five six years it's incredible and now they're like beating some of the best players in the world, if not the best players in the world. That's exactly what we're trying to do here. It's, it's a, the result of exactly what I'm trying to do. It's incredible. That was super cool, getting that exposure and, and having that local inspiration from two kids who were 
maybe like eight years younger than me too. I, I looked at them and saw what they were doing on the amateur side and said, that's, I'm, I'm gonna follow that path. I hope that that serves as motivation for, for tons of people to continue pushing and to go further than they think they're capable of going because um, you'll be surprised at what you can do. You can definitely do this. You know, just because you're not a, you're not a Ricky Wysocki or a Paul Macbeth doesn't mean you don't deserve to be a winner. We're all champions. It's just a matter of who is the biggest champion of that weekend. The very first hole, hole one on the course, um, the green is so tapered to the right, which slopes right towards the out of bounds. It's so easy for a second mm -hmm. shot to find the OB. Mm -hmm. I'm not pressing my luck trying to get a birdie if I'm out of position. As long as I, if I have a straight tunnel shot right to the basket, then I'll test my luck because maybe I can, worst case scenario, I can tap in an easy circle four. Mm -hmm. um, but that's one hole in particular where the, the foot's not going to necessarily be on the gas, especially being the first hole of the round. Uh, you don't, you're not winning anything right then and there. Coming into this tournament, my entire professional career, all I wanted to do was make a, a A-tier lead card. Just to hear the crowd getting louder and louder for every putt that I made down the stretch and ultimately learning what it meant and what position I was in after 54 holes of regulation, this may not be over yet. Like, I, this is a, 18 is a very birdieable hole. I gave the high fives to my card mates and I walked right over to my caddy. I said, okay, now you can show me scores. You're in the lead by one. Really? That's when we were just like, well, now we become spectators. We could very well be going to a playoff. So I was not counting any chickens. I wasn't doing anything like that. I was just kind of focusing. The time for celebrating that will be after the playoff. Whether I win the playoff or I lose the playoff, that's when you can say, okay, well, I, you know what? I shot a great round, put myself in position today. And you know, even if the playoff didn't go my way, I'm still super happy that we shot the 11 under par. We got to, you know, from chase guard to tie for first. That's awesome. That's not the, uh, the finish that I want. The pair of 28s are going to square off. We're going to be back with you with the exciting conclusion here of the clash at the canyons. First on the tee, from Bartlett, Illinois, Dan Schlitter. Dan, who's taken down countless events here in Illinois and in the greater Midwest region, looking to take down Disc Golf Pro Tour Silver Series event here. Vantage Slitter. What also really stands out about Dan is he's just a great person and then he's just good people all around and then to see him come out in his home state, in his hometown, in front of uh, all his friends, it's good Schlit. It's the 4th of July, I'm not going to forget and most certainly not Dan. The adrenaline that was going through my body was so intense that it actually made me stop and go, oh, holy shit, I do love this stuff. Like this is genuinely, I'm screaming right now and it is like primal. It was almost kind of reassuring. Like, yeah, you really do love this shit to the degree that like we can't explain to people that don't do it. The immediate reaction was to just kind of like gas up the boys. It's like, I kind of just like gave them the fist bump and was like, let's go. Like turn it up like this is now your stage just the two of you i could see them kind of just like yeah just kind of get in the zone like once once that once that happened and that of course the crowd was just screaming their brains out it was phenomenal it was really cool to see and there was a little bit of a stressful scramble to make sure everything was in place so the playoff could you know go down properly the excitement on everyone's faces and it was very exciting to see that. I was friggin' terrified. <laughs> I, was, I was shaking. Like, my heart was beating through my chest. We were all on that tee box with him as he threw down the gauntlet that is the right side gap of 13. That's the closest thing we know to that situation of like going into a playoff 
against a really good player at a high level event for a decent amount of money like that's kind of a pinnacle for a lot of these guys that are playing today. I can't imagine being under that pressure. Seeing him so calm and collected was really cool and very exciting and it made me feel like he could do this. Looking back, you know, that fairway is elevated backwards so when you turn around you could see everyone standing there. It was almost like a stadium so it was really cool to just see all the smiling faces and be right there in it. It was just unbelievable. It was the biggest deal that our track has ever seen and I just, it, it was electric. It was electric. I felt it. I was shaking. I was excited. I could see everybody. It was like electricity in the air. I think you really had to be there to feel that the energy firsthand in the crowd with everyone. It's something I can absolutely never forget and I'll never take for granted at all because that doesn't happen every single day. That doesn't happen every weekend. Even the best players in the world are not going to be at that top spot every weekend, getting their name chanted, you know, being being the talk of the town, essentially. Your Clash at the Canyons 2021 MPO. Champion! Yeah! It's some good slit! <laughs> Mr. Brian Slitter! I still don't believe what just happened, but I just looked at scores again, and it's true. Just to see the course packed and the support on every corner was unbelievable. Um, I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart. It, it absolutely is surreal um, to have people asking for autographs, <laughs> clapping for missed car putts. This is, it's, it's awesome. Huge, huge 55 hole shout out to my caddy, Kenny Slauson. I'm not sure where he I'll see you at the next one. That's something I'll never, ever take for granted. I'll always remember it and it'll always be further motivation because now I know what it's like to have a taste of being at the top. It makes you hungry to, to hear those chants, hear, the, hear your name chanted from 100 plus people simultaneously. That's what you play for. That's what you want to win for. The emotion the entire time was just adrenaline and focus. You know, I was so pumped up on the crowd energy, on the fact that I was there in the first place, and also just going first in the playoff alone. I don't think people realize that that's the biggest advantage you can have in a playoff. He is in really good position regardless right now. Roethlisberger has to be thinking, Dan's gonna make that putt. Wherever we find Terry, he's gonna need to convert from there. And then that second shot, I just reached for my trusty red ringer. Shout out to my boy Tom Earhart because he throws those in my face all the time and makes them look so smooth, I had to get one for myself. Dan Schlitter's championship to claim here at the Clash at the Canyons. And once I saw it curl and finally sit down and stop rolling, that's when I had a huge sigh of relief. The two most stressful parts of the hole were over. That's when I kind of started to realize, like, I'm going to win this tournament. Yeah.
remember this for the rest of my life. This is my biggest win to date, and it's not even close. This is monumental for me. And it's just gonna be a little nicer to know that uh, Schlitter is gonna be a little more of a household name after this. Yeah. Yeah. take the horns back and to get the Clash title back. Uh, it felt like it was coming back home, but at the same time realizing the magnitude of the event and what I really just did as a whole and who collectively I just beat, that was the feeling that was completely surreal and like, oh my God, you just did what? You just beat who? Um, those were the moments that were just kind of like, oh my gosh, this is, uh, this is beyond me right now. So those were the moments I would definitely say stick out to me as being just the ones I'll never forget because of the magnitude of the situation. We're still uh, absorbing that and figuring out what it, what it really means to us to have even done it and to have even witnessed what he did. We're still uh, living in the moment of, of feeling those feelings. It's, it's incredible. Pride. You know, seeing Sean in his element and just kind of being in the moment and excited and seeing Doc standing there and Ryan and uh, seeing Joe step up to announce. And I feel like we all kind of overcame a little bit of our own insecurities. And I'm just proud of everybody in their positions with the tournament and what they did. I feel pride that we could all come together and make something like that happen for uh, all these disc golfers. It still hasn't sunk in completely that that happened and I don't know I don't know how it ever will because um, I, I want to use it as motivation to continue to get back to that spot but at the same time you know I'm such a huge fan of the game and I know I'm still such a big student of the game I have so much left to learn. A big win like that is great but boy I'd love to surround it with some other ones some bigger ones than that even why stop there. The absolute best moment of my life so far and the best disc golf you know moment of my career um, I'm definitely looking forward to the next one for sure. It just didn't seem real because you don't expect things to happen that way because that's what we see in the movies. But it was happening right in front of us. We're all here because we love the game and we want to have fun. We ha we've had fun doing it in the past. That's why we've taken it to this competitive level. I think if you remember that portion of it in terms of fun first while still having that competitive edge, you'll start seeing better results come and you'll start feeling more comfortable on the course. That's, that's something that's helped me a lot, coming from baseball, playing as long as I have. When it comes down to execution and everything, it's, it's all on you. You have no one else to blame but yourself. My favorite part of the DGPT event, it's gonna have to go to Schlitter taking it down, without a doubt, but that's just like one tiny part of a million different parts that made it awesome. The volunteers were incredible, my team, the amount of work that my wife put into it, the amount of care that Ryan Fancher puts into every part of his, the aspects of what he does, Leo Borowski being there, Joe Moore being on the mic, Mike Apostolou and Josh Schenkenfelder being like basically TDs at Tournament Central with UDisc Live and killing it, and Thor doing all of the player meetings, it was just like, the best thing was that everything needed to be where it was. I felt like I watched a movie for three days. As these stops roll into town, be a part of it. If the TD is, you know, is allowing spectators, go. Go watch and go gas up all the people that you know because that's what they thrive on. The only compliment that I kept on hearing was just like how much the crowd was getting them in the zone. And that's... That's just epic. That's cool. Is it terrible to say my favorite part of Clash is when it's over? <laughs> because it's, it, it's an accomplished thing and we're proud, but, you know, stressed out. There's so many emotions that happen. And then at the same time, we're already planning for next year. As well as it went, there's always room for improvement and we can always go bigger and better, which I feel like I shouldn't say on camera because now that's stuck in stone forever. <laughs> My favorite part of the event 
I would say just in the event itself, I think was just the spectators. Not only for me, the support for me was, was unbelievable, but the support for everybody um, was awesome. Like, man, I don't know how many times I play with guys, some of the best in the world, obviously they're running huge putts, barely missing these putts, tapping them in, and they're still getting tons of applause. Just, they just tapped in a five footer and people are going nuts for them. Not because they're you know impressed or because they did something, but just because they're happy that they're there. I mean, and it, it's a mutual feeling. You know, the players were so happy, the spectators were there, and the spectators are seeing, you know, the best players in the world, or, or some of the best players in the world, the Philos, the Nikos, Brody Smiths, you know, some of these players who they've seen for years on coverage, and now they get to see them in the flesh at their home course. By far, the best part of the event was just feeling the love from the spectators and noticing the love from the players because of the spectators. So I just loved seeing both sides of the, of the table. Um, it, it really made me feel good as both a player and a community member as well. Part of me was like, I'm so excited for him, but another part of me was so excited for us because <laughs> we made it to the end of the weekend. It was just a perfect, perfect ending. Everyone gets inspired from large tournaments that are played on their home courses. I think it makes the volunteers proud to be a part of you know, such a, a cool experience as well. I really want to continue to play um, as many big events as I can play, as many big events as I can get out to while still being a, you know, while still being a working professional. You know, it's, it's all about having that perfect work-life balance. That's kind of what I've been preaching the last few years. Now, especially after getting, you know, such a monumental win that gives me so much confidence to get out to more Pro Tour events and see how much higher my name can propel up those leaderboards. I think that so far I've had a really good balance of playing the big events that I can get out to while still being um, present in the local scene, running tournaments and running leagues and being, being present here while also being present at my job during the day. So I absolutely love everything I'm involved in with the local community and being on the road full time would mean that I wouldn't be able to um, host league events or host tournaments to the degree that I want to and that's almost just as rewarding as playing well if not more rewarding because running a tournament is like putting on a party for a hundred plus of your closest friends, a disc golf party. To have Dan win and do it in such a dramatic fashion in a playoff just couldn't be more perfect. He was excited for his win but he was excited to share it with everyone. Welcome home. You know, this, this title belongs here. It needs to stay in Illinois. A big stretch goal was to try and take this title back, and I was just more than happy to see that, that we succeeded. I would like to think that Dan is completely happy with exactly where Dan is at. It's not by chance that he won an event. It's because he's the best. Thank you. Gleaming with uh, excitement and emotion, hometown guy, Illinois favorite, and Dan Schlitter taking things down. Takes it in 2021. Dan Schlitter, your champion in dramatic fashion. Fireworks galore here on the 4th of July. Congratulations to you, Dan, along with the rest of the crew that's out there.